I'm Jim Benson, and you're listening to TV Time Machine. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and visit our show archives at tvtimemachine.com. Today on the TV Time Machine, we welcome legendary ringleader of daytime television, Sherry Springer. Mr. Springer is a former politician, lawyer, and news anchor whose iconic talk show is now entering its 23rd season on the air. Over the next segment, Jerry Springer will discuss his life and career and the history of his outrageous and controversial daytime talk show. Again, for those of you intrepid enough to listen to this program, feel free to take a Springer break as we confront our past in order to battle it out in the present. Jerry, thank you for coming on board the TV Time Machine. Sure, thanks for having me. Now, of course, you're the host of the legendary nationally syndicated daytime talk show, The Jerry Springer Show. Jerry, tell us what we can expect to see in the near future on your show. Well, it's still crazy. I mean, you know, the show's a circus, so I guess the circus continues. And um, I think what makes the show last so long and what works is just the personality of the guests. So, um, you know, if you want a one-hour escape from what normally ails you in life, you know, watching the show, you'll, you'll have an escape, that's for sure. Now, has social media had an influence on some of the topics for your show? Not really. Um, it's more probably what's happening with the... Because our show came before that. Right. So what has happened is that in the beginning, people were... Sh- you know, in the early 90s, people were shocked to see the stories we had on television. Uh, and, and people would say, you know, how can people talk about their own lives like that? You know, and but now with social media, you know, everyone's talking about their life. You go to Facebook or, you know, the Instagrams or whatever it is, everyone's, or YouTube, everyone's revealing the most <laughs> private moments of their life. Exactly. They're putting it right out there. So it, it, it's hard to say, you know, that we've been influenced by that. Probably, the, you know, I mean, the show came first, and now with technology... It's just become part of the culture, for better or worse. People are doing away with their own privacy. Of course, your show has had a tremendous run, 23 seasons. What has been the key to your longevity, which is extraordinary? I, I think, I don't think it has anything to do with me. I mean, anyone could do what I do. Uh, I mean, what do I do? I, what I do is I go out there and I said, you did what? Come on out. We'll be right back. <laughs> so if you can say those three lines, you can be a talk show host. <laughs> but I think the the serious answer to the question probably would be that our show is aimed at kids. And when I say kids, I mean high school and college age. If you have a show that's aimed, let's say, at 16-year-olds, you can be on forever. Because every year, there's suddenly a new class of kids old enough to start watching, you know, when mom isn't home and the giggle factor and all that. If you do a show that's aimed at 30-year-olds... By the time they're 33, they're bored with the show because your tastes don't change between 30 and 33. But your tastes do change between 12 and 16. Right. So all of a sudden, so every year we're suddenly having a whole new group of kids. You know, how many kids or grown-ups today will say, oh, boy, your show got me through college. You know, I used to watch it when I was, you know, a senior in high school, that kind of stuff. So I think that's why the show lasts is because we always have new young people. Now, has that changed over the years? When you first started your show, was the demo different? Well, the first few years it was. Um, You know, back when we started, there were 20 talk shows on the air, and they all were trying to be like Oprah. They were going after the demographic, which at that time was referred to as middle-aged housewives. And So there were 20 shows, and we were all doing the same thing. And then along came Ricky Lake, and uh, we had been on for about three years at that point. And she really was the first talk show to go after the kids, the high school and college age. So one day, I'm walking down Michigan Avenue in Chicago where we did the show uh, after lunch with my executive producer, and I'm saying, you know, just as a business model, why are we trying to be one out of 20 shows competing with Oprah's audience why not just be one out of two going after Ricky's audience, and then we'll get a much larger audience because right. it will only be split two ways. 
So we decided from then on, I mean, literally starting the next day, from now on, we would only have young people in the audience, young people on stage, young subject matter. Well, as you know, young people are much more open about their lives, much wilder, much crazier. So every once in a while, our show would be crazy. Then Universal bought us and said, from now on, you're only allowed to do crazy. And that's, you know, that's in the contract. So if you call us with a warm, uplifting story, we're not allowed to run it. Wow. Um, we have to send it to another show, and we're given a list of the shows that it can go to based on the subject matter. But we're not allowed to run those shows. Mm. So therefore, we're only allowed to do shows about inappropriate, you know, dysfunctional <laughs> behavior. And that's what the show's about. If I had signed a contract to host a show about basketball, right. every day we'd have basketball players on. No one would be saying to me, well, why don't you do a show on the impact of inflation on the world? <laughs> you know, it's no, it's a, you know, it's a basketball show. Well, our show is about inappropriate behavior. So I know every day they're going to hand me something that's inappropriate. Now, are there dimensions of yourself or of your career that you wish people had a greater awareness? No, because, and, and, and the reason for that is, I think if you ever try to mix your private life, your personal life, with show business, you're going to ruin both. And uh, and all you have to do is look at magazines or a lot of these shows with celebrities. Every time they try to mix the two, something gets screwed up. So, you know, when I go and do my show, I'm doing my show. That's me as a businessman doing what I do. But when I go home, that's my private life. That's my, you know, my wife of 40 years. That's mm -hmm. my daughter. It's my grandson. Um, you know, it's my family and, and my friends that I grew up with. So I keep that totally private because, you know, if I, my daughter, and you know, my family has to know that I view them differently than I do just everyone I meet on the street or on stage. Right. Because if I did it, if it was the same, then obviously I'm not making them special. Right. So I want my daughter to know that it's not the Jerry Springer on stage when she's coming to me with a problem. Hmm. If this is dead and you can, you know, and there's a certain level of communication that we have that I wouldn't have with anybody else. Yeah. And I, I think that's important to keep. So no, I never mix the two. That's smart. Jerry, what have you learned about human nature, both good and bad, while doing the Jerry Springer show? Well, to be honest, I can't tell you that I've learned anything particularly new by doing the show, because I didn't start doing the show until I was already a grown-up, like 48. You know, I'm 70 now, so I probably started the show when I was 48, 47. So, and I'd already been 10 years as a city councilman and mayor of, uh, of Cincinnati, you know, major American city and then 10 years as a news anchor. Um, so I had already been a grown-up in life dealing with people and problems and all kinds of issues. So it wasn't as if once I started doing the show, oh my gosh, I didn't know people are like this. And then there's the other answer, which is you can't be a grown-up in today's world and be shocked by anything you've ever seen on my show. You might be surprised that something that happens on my show, for example, happened to someone in your family. That would be surprising because you didn't, you thought you knew them, and then this happened. Right. But there's no you. You can open any newspaper in America on any single day, and by the time you get to page three, I've got twenty shows. Right. So there's <laughs> nothing that's surprising anymore. I mean, we could not possibly be a shocking as the real headlines in the world. So, you know, I can't, honestly, it'd be disingenuous for me to say, oh, I was so shocked when I heard that someone had cheated on their, you know, boyfriend. You know, really? <laughs> exactly. Jerry Springer, the host of the nationally syndicated daytime talk show, The Jerry Springer Show, which airs daily. Check your local listings. Jerry, it's been a tremendous pleasure having you aboard the hey, TV Time Machine. I appreciate it. Feel free to join us again in the future or in the past. <laughs> 